Hey you guys, I hope you're doing well. I want to dive into a really great topic today. Let's talk about competitive friends. Let's talk about jealousy because at some point in our lives, we are going to have friends who are competitive, who are a little insecure, who are a little jealous of us. And these things just happen sometimes because we're dealing with so many different types of personalities. So whether it is a sister, a cousin, a friend, a partner, whoever, someone who just has their own stuff going on internally, has absolutely no idea, and is just competitive with us, who's just maybe a little insecure and jealous of how do we deal with it. So I wanna give you not only the signs of someone who is competitive or jealous that you may not realize, but I also want to teach you what you have to do within your own self, because let's be honest, I am always, always going to stress the importance of what do you have to do because the only thing that you can control is yourself. Dealing with a jealous person, a competitive person, an insecure person is extremely exhausting and emotionally draining. Now here's the real problem here, is if you're codependent, then you may not even realize that you're dealing with a jealous person. You may not even realize that you have a competitive friend, that you, you may not even realize also that this person really is very insecure. So when you are codependent, when you are a little bit of that empath, when you are highly sensitive, a combination of all those things, or maybe just one, you are going to sense that insecurity, that jealousy, and you're going to want to try to fix this person. You're going to want to make them feel comfortable and make your accomplishments, what's going on with you, be less than. So you're gonna make yourself smaller so you don't, you're gonna have this sense of guilt for wanting to shine or wanting it to be about you that you're going to play that stuff down so this person doesn't feel insecure. Maybe you're not really struggling with the codependency thing. Maybe it's just honestly exhausting to listen to the passive aggressive comments, the negative comments, and going on this ride with this person where every time something's going on in your life, this is like the last person that you wanna talk to about it because you know that they're just not going to be able to be there for you in the way that you would want them to be. A person that is always looking to one-up you in conversations, that when something good is happening with you or you're happy about this, it now becomes about them. So you'll probably see this in like narcissistic narcissistic, not necessarily narcissism, you definitely see it in narcissism, but the person doesn't have to be narcissistic. They could maybe be a conversational narcissist where it kind of always goes back to them and they're always trying to like just one up you in, in conversations. Or it's always about themselves and never about you in the sense that they never praise you, they never encourage you, they never wanna celebrate your wins. It's not something, maybe they don't downplay things, but they just, they can't ever really put the spotlight on you because it makes them feel insecure that they don't have that or that they're not there. So it's always, always about how they feel and they can't really ever hold a space for anyone else. They don't really have a genuine interest in you. They have an interest in you, but a lot of the times, and this is really where the narcissism comes into play, is where it just benefits them, what benefits them, or if they do have any inkling of an interest in your life and what's going on for you, they can't really celebrate you in the way that you would probably celebrate them. They just have a difficulty celebrating other people's successes because it shines a mirror on the fact that maybe at this point in time that they don't have that same level of success or they don't have that relationship. Remember, if you're not aware of this, then you're going to make what's happening in your life seem not as important or not as exciting, or you're going to play it down a little bit to try to make this person feel better when really that's not your job, that's their job. Sometimes when you're dealing with that insecure competitive person, you're going to see signs of wanting to be the center of attention, someone that always has to be in the limelight. And this is really where the narcissism comes into play, but sometimes not so much. You don't have to have NPD in order to just wanna be the center of attention sometimes because it gives you validation that makes you feel like you're enough. The problem sometimes with this also is that when you're unaware that this is the type of relationship that you have in your life, you're going to try to one-up them as well. Your self-esteem ends up coming down 
because you are making it come down. You are making yourself feel smaller. So if you make yourself feel smaller because of guilt, because you feel uncomfortable, because they're uncomfortable, then that's going to affect your self-esteem. And on, in some ways, you're going to start being competitive with them as well. All of these things can really show in the criticism, the constant criticism, the constant negative comments, the constant picking at you and nitpicking the situation or making light of what could happen in a negative way versus what could happen in a positive way. This is really that sneaky part of this is where sometimes we don't, we can't blatantly see the insecurity. We can't, I know for me, I could not see that years ago. I didn't see that. I just took everything on and I just, and, and I realized just how exhausting it was, but I didn't realize that right off the bat in these relationships. I didn't see the nitpicking. I didn't see that I was dumbing myself down or playing myself down to try to make this person feel good about themselves. I didn't realize that I was making that my responsibility. I didn't always realize that the way they celebrated me was not anywhere near the way I would celebrate them. I didn't realize that they couldn't hold the same space for me that I was holding for them. And it, and it doesn't mean one's, you know, I was right and they were wrong or I'm a good person and they're not. It has nothing to do with that. It just has to do with trying to find the people that are your tribe, the people in your life that should be in your life that will inspire you and motivate you and uplift you and make you feel good. That's what relationships are supposed to be about. They're not supposed to be about competition. They're not supposed to be about insecurity and jealousy. And look, could we all feel those things from time to time? Absolutely. But when we feel them, when we're healthy, we take responsibility for them. We don't put those things on someone else in order for them to change or do something differently for us to actually feel good about ourselves. The way you can tell whether or not someone is healthy is not by being perfect. It doesn't exist, it will never exist, you have a past, you have an ego. So that, those things are always going to be with you. The difference between someone who's healthy and someone who's not has to do with one thing, self-awareness. Self-awareness and do I take responsibility for what I'm seeing? Or do I make that your responsibility? Do you need to change? Do you need to behave differently. Do you need to say this to me in order for me to feel good about myself? If that's the case, I'm not healthy. If I can fully own my stuff, then I'm healthy. People are competitive for a multitude of reasons and being competitive is not something that necessarily is a negative thing. It can actually be a really positive thing. Some people just have this internal drive to be successful. They set really high expectations for themselves and they can just self-motivate very easily. Now, it could also be a negative thing. You could also be a competitive person that wants the achievement, wants the success, wants the recognition because that makes me feel like I'm in the spotlight. It gives me validation. Being competitive could just really mean that I want something. I want financial stability. I want to find fulfillment in something. I want to find my purpose. There could be an expectation that you have with success and being competitive is just the driving force in order for you to get there. Maybe you were raised in a family that was extremely competitive. So there was such an importance on competition and that being the best meant something. But most often, comparison and competitiveness stems from deep-rooted insecurity. Usually this has to do with your childhood, you, the experiences that you were in growing up. Were you raised in a competitive family? Were the expectations on you very, very high? Did you not get what you needed growing up? Did you feel a lack of support? Did you experience emotional abuse? Did you experience any forms of neglect in any way? So the, the competitiveness stems from insecurity and jealousy and things like that because I need these things in order to, for me to feel good inside. Some of it, you know, you can pick out as being a positive thing, but you have to learn the balance, the real balance between being healthy, being secure, and being a competitive person with yourself, but not also beating yourself up. Wanting success and all of those things are perfectly fine, 
but not putting all of your happiness and self-worth on those things. Now for the average person that's healthy, understanding this balance, you may understand it, but you still have to be self-aware to recognize when the ego is starting to take over and where those things are starting to become negative things. For the average person that is completely unaware, these things are going to always stem from either your upbringing or things that were pounded into you that became part of your program. Like I said, comparison, competitiveness, judgment. If you experienced all of those things at a very high volume growing up, you're going to be bred with those things. If you experience a lot of neglect, you are going to be a very jealous, insecure person. Now let's get into the most important things. You. How do you handle the situation? What I want you to do is I want you to start reflecting on this relationship and this person. Take the time to really understand who this person is and where these things really stem from. I don't think you realize sometimes just how intuitive you are and that you can read people very easily if you slow down and take the time to really harness that intuition. You'll start to see really quickly why a person is the way they are and where this behavior is actually stemming from. When you don't do this, you just become reactive to the behavior. The next thing that I want you to do is I want you to work on your self-esteem. Being around this person causes you to be in a very vulnerable state. What I mean by that is if you're not aware of what's going on, why this person is the way that they are, and learning how to not take these things on and detaching, having better boundaries, etc., your self-esteem is going to be affected. This is not just a random person that you bumped into at the post office who is rude to you and said some things where you can blatantly smell their insecurity coming through or their jealousy coming through or, or whatever. This is someone who's probably close to you and what they say matters whether you believe it or not and if you don't understand and if you can't create a bubble around yourself when you're around this person they are going to affect your self-esteem with all things and all relationships one of the most important things that you will work on is boundaries understanding what you will and will not tolerate understanding how often you should be around a person being able to detach from that person when they're behaving in a certain way to understand them on a deeper level than you do so you are not reactive and so you do not take things on that is extremely important and if you don't work on those things you're always going to be surrounded with relationships that are just unhealthy. And that is going to affect not only your self-esteem and how you feel about yourself, but it's going, going to affect your mood, the days, how your day goes, because when you're around someone, it's just going to carry, they're, they're gonna let all of that toxicity and all that baggage just kind of fall on your lap, and then you're gonna take that with you throughout the course of your day. And that affects so much of your life is the people you surround yourself with. So guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to share me with friends and family. Regardless of what people are going through, everyone needs a dose of mental health and to learn this stuff. I have been on the phone with so many people where the daughter has shared my channel with the mother and they both watch me or the sister was going through something but then she knew that the cousin was going through something different but she knew that she would benefit so this channel is so so important to really help you gain an understanding and educate you and motivate you and give you just insights on what you can start working on within yourself to really have a great life right not just like achieve goals and get through narcissistic abuse and get through this divorce but just have a good day so I hope you guys have enjoyed again, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.